Welcome to Best Disc Golf Discs video guide series. My name is Bart Bird, and in this episode, we'll be covering how and when to use every driver in your bag. Many players have a full bag of discs, but many players also tend to favor just one disc that they force into different flight patterns by altering their release angle. While this strategy can be moderately effective, a much better result will come from using discs in the way they want to fly and by accentuating the natural tendencies of the disc. To help make sure you're choosing the right disc at the right time from your bag, today we'll be covering the four main flight paths of discs, the key uses for discs producing each of those flight patterns, and the wind impact on disc selection and how that may alter the right disc for the situation. All of the graphics in today's video will be based on a right hand backhand or left hand forehand throwing motion. In both cases, the disc will be rotating in a clockwise direction. For left hand backhand and right hand forehand players, simply reverse the graphics. And a few key reminders for today. For this discussion, it'll be important to remember that discs thrown into a headwind will generate more turnover than they normally would. And discs thrown with a supporting tailwind will generate less turnover than they normally would. So let's get started. The first key flight pattern is an overstable flight, and this is where the disc begins to pull hard to the left almost immediately upon release. The second and opposite pattern for our discussion today is the understable flight pattern, and this is where the disc turns over almost immediately, headed right before finishing mostly straight or possibly coming back slightly to the left. Thirdly, we have the max distance flight pattern. In this flight pattern, the disc will turn over gently before fading back to the left, resulting in a long floating net straight flight. Shown graphically, on the left side, we have our overstable flight pattern. On the right side, we have our understable flight pattern. And in between, we have our max distant flight pattern. The fourth pattern falls in between our overstable and max distance flight pattern in which the disc flies mostly straight before generating a little bit of fade at the end of flight. To begin our discussion on individual uses for these patterns, we'll start with our overstable flight. Because discs generating an overstable flight pattern have a strong tendency to pull to the left, they make an excellent option for your hyzer shots, further accentuating the disc's natural tendency to the left. A second great option for these discs is when you're throwing into a headwind. As we discussed, because the headwind will cause the disc to generate more turnover than it normally would, your overstable disc when thrown into a headwind will generate a pattern more like this, or even more like your max distance flight pattern, depending on the intensity of the headwind. On the opposite end of the spectrum, your understable discs makes an excellent choice for Anheuser's, where its natural pull to the right will help it hold an Anheuser angle for as long as possible. A second great option for understable discs are distance rollers. For a distance roller, the Anheuser disc's strong tendency to turn over combined with an Anheuser release will cause the disc to turn all the way over, landing on its side and rolling for a very long way toward the basket. A third great option for discs giving you an understable flight pattern are for throws with supporting tailwinds because the tailwind, as discussed earlier, will cause the disc to fly in a more overstable pattern, transitioning it to something much more like your max distance flight. This brings us to our discussion of discs producing the two patterns we see in the middle. And the difference between when to select each is based on the wind conditions, with your straighter flying disc being your key choice for windy days and your maximum distance pattern disc being your best option on calm days. On a windy day, your straighter flying disc could potentially produce the overstable flight pattern, its normal straighter pattern, or the max distance pattern, depending on whether or not you have a headwind or a tailwind. Along those same lines, a disc that would normally give you a max distance pattern could produce the straighter flight pattern or the understable flight pattern, depending on the winds. When looking at the most likely flight pattern for these two discs on a windy day, it becomes a discussion of consistency. While all of the most likely landing points with your straighter flying disc are straight or to the left, which could easily be adjusted for by altering the direction of your throw, with the max distance disc you end up with landing points that are straight or left or right, much less predictable and much more likely to land you in trouble. The max distance disc will still most likely produce the longer flight of the two, but based on the width of the fairway and potential obstacles, you'll need to decide if it's worth the risk. So we hope this helps. If you are having trouble finding any discs that will generate turnover for the maximum distance flight 
or the understable pattern, we hope you'll check out our guide showing 12 discs that are easy to throw far. But until next time, thanks for watching and have a great round.